then there, there are again two outcomes, at least two outcomes. You are very happy uh, before you start getting anxious. That's one outcome. Or you are unhappy because it looked better on the shelf than in your hands, on the shelf in the shop than in your hands. It looked better, you thought you were buying something that was that was a certain way, but you were disappointed. Happens not just with things, but people also. People look wonderful after first, uh, first two meetings over coffee. And then after that, what happens? Your mood is coffee. That's what happens. <laughs> so there is no, uh, you know, the, the, the third, at the third meeting, you don't like them that much. All these things are there. And so therefore, the, uh, uh, the, the, this is, the, so the, so two outcomes. One is, you are happy for five minutes, but then you start getting anxious. Because whatever has been grabbed has to be protected from everybody. Because that which I have is a coveted, loved object by everybody. With great difficulty, I have been able to get it. So I have to protect it from everybody. Thieves, thugs, and uh, you know, people, other people who have an eye for this. So what to do? Like that, this is all backwards. So in India, this is what happens. So they go and get a diamond necklace made, very costly, and gold and diamonds and everything. Then you can't keep it at home. What do you do? Then you pay for a locker. And then you lock it up. So what's the point of having it? Keeping it in the locker. No, if I want to wear, when I want to wear, I will wear. And then by the time you, you say, oh, going all the way to get it to wear for one wedding or one celebration that I'm going to one particular function, it's not worth it. And then half the time you just forget that it's there. And so, so if you are, if you want it and got it, then you have this anxiety about how to protect it and how to keep it from deteriorating. The anxiety is again twofold. How to protect it from other people getting it and then how to protect it from itself because everything is in time. Where also something wears off and then it's all, let's say we are still talking about the necklace, it's a delicate design. While wearing it, you drop it and a few diamonds go missing. And then all this are his cause for heart attack. And so that, that is one thing. And if you don't get it, you still are, you know, you, 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 you are heart sick because you really wanted it and you have to unleash a new set of things. Oh, but you are just being so negative. Why not just say you got it and you are happy with it? You got it and you are happy with it, that is not forever. Never forever. Can the happiness be centered on something other than you and it be forever? Not possible. Why? Because you yourself are changing. It may not change. It may be exactly how it is. But you yourself get sick of it. That is a possibility. Nothing is constant. Even the Raga Dveshas are not constant. Because if a thing promises to make you happy, then if that thing should make you happy under all conditions, under all times. If happiness was centered on the object, that particular object should make me happy under all situations at all times. But is that the case? No, not at all. But if you say, no, no, I really like something, I like gulab jamuns, and they always make me happy. The thought of gulab jamun makes me smile. And it always makes me happy. What are you saying? Let's say you have stomach trouble, stomach flu. Stomach flu means stomach is not present. It has flown away. It is not there. Stomach flu. And then you are presented with Gulab Jamun, what will you say? Take it away. <laughs> Take it far away. Even you know, the thought of it is making me nauseous. I don't want it. You see? It's the happy 
happiness was centered on the gulab jamun, it should make you happy all the time. Or you have eaten a lot at somebody's house, you are invited for lunch. Soon after lunch, you go to somebody else's house and you are given gulab jamun. So you will say thanks, but no thanks. Keep it with you another time. You'll be feeling sad also. That oh, so sad, my favorite dish I can't eat because I have stuffed myself. And so uh, there is no room, you see. And then, let's say there is room. There is, the, there is nothing wrong with the stomach. Stomach is okay. Karana. Karana means the means of digesting and all is okay. Everything is okay. But you've had a fight with somebody you love. Mood is off. And then maybe there is yoga, separation from that person. And you are in a place of just a lot of anxiety in the mind. Why did this happen? What should I have said? What did I say? What should I have not said? All this is going round and round in the head. And then what? Then here, have some gulab jamun. We like throwing it away. You are not in the mood for gulab jamun. So, the mental karanas, the mental uh, karanas for upabhoga, for enjoyment, must be intact. To enjoy the object, for the object and subject to fuse. If that is what the definition of uh, happiness is, in the, in the loka, in any uh, regular uh, quote unquote regular world. What is the definition of happiness? The object of delight and the subject should become one. <coughs> Whether that say object or an event or a person doesn't matter. The subject object fusion causes happiness. That is not the case. That is not the case at all. Because what happens is that there are many, there is many a slip between the cup and the lip. For the subject and the object to come together, there may be many obstacles, karmic obstacles. So many times, it's a hit and a miss. You leave the room and then gulab jamun is served. You finish your lunch and go to your room and then your friend who went late says, Oh, you left early, gulab jamun was served. <laughs> After you left. So sad. But that's what it is. So the subject object fusion sometimes doesn't take place. And then for that fusion also to take place, you know, everything has to be in order. The mind has to be in a good mood and wanting that object. And the object itself must not be rotten or not bad. And then what else? The, the, the mood has to, the emotions have to be okay. And the stomach, the karana for digesting this uh, this treat has to also be okay. That means what? If I'm not already happy, gulab jamun cannot make me happy. That is the idea. And so here also, all the things that one has connected has not made one happy. Which is why Jai Ho six month course, which is why one is searching. <laughs> Jai Ho means long live, <laughs> long live six months course. That's why one is seeking, 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 seeking. So everything, what, whatever one has collected, I'm sure you have come from so many places. You have a house, you have things in it, and many of the things are things that you have lo lovingly collected. Honestly, tell me, in these eleven days, how many times have you thought of those things? How many times? First of all, we make sure there is no time, okay? And <laughs> so this is kind of a loaded question. But <laughs> even if there was some time, you would not think of it. This is one of the ways to just not collect a lot of things because this is what Swamiji also talked about in the morning. And uh, this is exactly what it is. Whatever you are not using, put in a box. If you haven't used it for three months, put in a box for another three months. Because if I say throw it away, give it away, uh, people will not come for the morning meditation. So therefore, I, I have to be, I have to go slow. Keep it, keep it away for three months, then look at it. And then you will say, ha, ah, did I have this? When did I get this? You would have 
have just forgot completely about it. You would have totally forgot it. And then if you have totally forgot it, give yourself another break, keep it again in the box under the bed or uh, in the attic, uh, in somewhere on the top shelf for three more months. If you haven't used it in six months, you, that means you are fine without it. You are absolutely fine without it. So you can have baby vairagya by putting things in a box and not looking at them. This does not include Upanishad and Sanskrit notes. Okay? <laughs> Don't put that in the box for the next three months. This only includes objects that you have collected and you have brought here and you thought you couldn't be without. That is what we are talking about. So then, if you got it, then these are the trajectories. If you don't have it, then you are disappointed. And even if you have it and if it doesn't make you anxious, what does it do? It makes you addicted. It makes you a helpless slave to that particular thing. And that is what it is. So you thought you were going to play with something, but it is playing you. It is playing with you. And that is like a very, very weak position to be in. Really weak. To be lauded by Gulab Jamun. <laughs> Gulab Jamun, an inert jada thing. Jada means inert. Having no sign of life whatsoever. That has the power to make your knees go weak. What a thing. Why give it so much power? You are the one that has the buddhi. Gulab Jamun has no buddhi. You are Chetana, sentient, conscious. Gulab Jamun Jada, insentient. You have the ability to discern. You have Viveka. It does, it does not have Viveka. It does not have anything except rose essence and lot of sugar and calories. That's all it has. So you are supposed to be the master here. But in a way, that small thing, a small ubiquitous thing has mastery over you because if you give it the power to make you happy, then that means there is an addiction going on. And in fact, the definition of samsara is addiction. In fact, one is addicted to samsara itself. Samsara is a series of addiction. Each one, each addiction leads to sorrow. Every addiction leads to sorrow. Think of any addiction that ends in happiness. You won't be able to. There is no such thing. Because the word addiction itself shows helplessness. Helplessness and sorrow are sisters. They always go together. Or brothers, whatever. They go together. Addiction means helplessness. Addiction means anxiety. Oh my God, tomorrow if it is not there, how am I going to live my life? Addiction is helplessness. Addiction is anxiety. Addiction is ultimately sorrow. Because bereft of it, I am lonely. I am not myself. I have given it the power to rule over me. That is why Viraga gives Sukha. Because it, Vairagya throws you back, gives you back to yourself. That I, whose heart was frittered away in so many objects, I have given a piece of my heart to every single thing in the universe. I love this, I love that, I want to have this, I want to have that, I cannot do without this, I cannot do without that. And then what? I have no heart for myself left. It's all given away. And I'm helpless, I'm at the mercy of these objects. Sometimes it is people in dysfunctional, um, and what is the trendy word to use, toxic relationships. In dysfunctional and toxic, poisonous relationships, this is what happens. There is a there is a dependency. Even though the there is not a healthy relationship, there is a terrible dependency. And dependency always causes anxiety because of the thought of being without it. It causes sorrow. And even if it causes sorrow, I am unable to be away from it. And so this is what this is what any kind of a connection to anything in life. 
not just a connection, but a connection of addiction, an addictive connection. These are its prasadas, anxiety, sorrow, helplessness. But then when you say, I can do without you, I'm going to kick the habit, whatever habit it might be. Even if the habit is another person, you say, okay, no more, bye-bye, finished. And then what? Then definitely you are happier, you are lighter, you feel victorious, you don't feel helpless. You feel victorious, you say, oh, all this time I was in some, I was living under a teacup, I was thinking that I can, I can do, uh, I can't do without this thing, but I can, I'm stronger for it. I have conquered this addiction. There is so much joy, there is a sense of self-confidence, there is achievement. And all this is spurred by what? Vairagya towards the object of addiction. That's how Vairagya is responsible for Sukha. What kind of Sukha? Atma Sukha. The emergence of the Ananda, which is oneself, cannot happen when the heart is given away to so many objects, when everything is just object-oriented in my life. The Sukha that is stemming from and is the nature of the subject is eclipsed by the helplessness, the addiction, the anxiety, the sorrow. That is why Vairagya gives Sukha. And that is why we have, you know, we have uh, what is Brahmacharya, what is so many things, there are rules and there is way of life. In a way here, it is a little bit of an enforced Vairagya. Because in the beginning it has to be enforced. If we told everybody, do as you like. Here's the six month course, do as you like, do freely live however you want and then by the way Vairagya is good who will follow? Nobody. So just like for the baby you know the, wh whoever is you know feeding the baby who you tell the child you tell the small child you have to try everything then only you will develop a taste for it. It doesn't know what is it. It just looks and says yuck I don't want this it looks funny it looks different I don't want it. And we sit with the child and say, you don't have to like it, but what do you have to do? You have to try it. You have to try everything. And so here also, there is a trial by Ragya. There is a trial by Ragya built into the course. And if you don't like it, six months later, you can go back, business as usual, no problem. But here, you have a little time frame to try it and to see what it is like. And that is, you know, that is beginning with the clothes. There is, you know, there is a relief. What to wear tomorrow, you don't have to think. <laughs> yeah. And then you don't have to stand out. Oh, everybody else is wearing something else and then I'm wearing the same thing that I wore day before yesterday. You don't have to stand out. You just kind of blending, there is a kind of a nice thing not having to think about it. And then you don't have to worry about the color running. See, all these wonderful things about this Vairagya. What to wash and you know, laundry instructions. Do wash with like colors. Don't wash with this. Everything you just throw in the bucket and just go like that. <laughs> yeah. Everything you go, you just go like that and then nicely give it a few thwacks and then, you know, um, rinse it in uh, another water. Put very little soap, okay? Otherwise, you'll be keeping on bubbling. you keep on bubbling. you miss the classes, yeah. These are all little tricks and tips, yeah. Ashram laundry tips. <laughs> what did you do in Sansan? Oh, we got some ashram laundry tips. Very little soap. The Indian soap is full of bubbles. Yeah, very bubbly soap it is. And so put very little soap, give it a few thwacks, and then uh, swish it around and then just hang it finished. You don't have to worry. Oh, the color will uh, be fade in the sun. No problem. <laughs> yeah, 
come. You will be free and happy. So this is a little bit of an enforced vairagya to get you to taste it and try it and see what it is like. That is why asya sukham na karoti viragya. Then we are going to skip 19 and then we will do 20. Bhagavad Gita Kinchita Dita Bhagavad Gita Kinchita Dita Ganga Jalanava Kanika Pita Ganga Jalanava Kanika Pita Sakrada Pigena Murari Samarcha Sakrada Pigena Murari Samarcha Priyate Tasya Lame so if you are not able to do all that, if you are not able to have Vairagya, take some baby steps. What are the baby steps? You know, Kinchit Bhagavad Gita Adhita. A little bit of Bhagavad Gita if it is studied. Kinchit means little bit. Dharma Kshetre, Kuru Kshetre, that's all. You know, <laughs> not like that, but one verse one has studied. Little bit one has heard. Little bit one has studied. Kinchi. Adhita. Adhita is feminine. Why? Because Bhagavad Gita is feminine. Bhagavad Gita, Adhita. Bhagavad Gita has been studied a little bit. Then, Ganga Jalanava, Kanika Pita. A drop of a little bit, a little drop of Ganga water has been sipped, drunk. Sakrit api, Sakrit means at least once. Sakrit api, at least once. Yena, by whom? This Yena will come all to all these things. Yena, Kinchit Bhagavad Gita Adhita. By whom a little bit of Bhagavad Gita has been studied? Yena, what was the next one? Yeah, Yena, Ganga Jala Pita. Meaning by whom a little bit of Ganga uh, uh, Jala, uh, the Ganga water has been drunk. Yena, Sakrutapi Murari Samarja. Samarja means? Archa means worship, Archana, short, Archa, feminine. So Murari, who is Murari? Krishna. Krishna, why? Mura is the name of a demon. An Asura who had five heads. Half a Ravana, okay? <laughs> Ravana had ten heads, Murari had five heads. And he was always looking for a fight. All the demons in, uh, in Indian folklore and Puranic uh, you know, stories, they are all devotees gone wrong. Devotees with too much mada, uh, too much pride, etc. And so this Murari also was a devotee. A devotee with, uh, with a, uh, what is that, with an end. They, the, these kinds of devotees always want one of two things. Immortality at the level of the body, nobody should be able to kill me and or world domination. Those are the only two things they ask for when Bhagavan comes. So here he thought he will pray uh, to the creator, Lord Brahmaji. So he prayed, prayed, prayed and then Brahmaji appeared and he said, no, no human being should be able to kill me. But, you know, Brahmaji said, no problem, all right, no, no human being will be able to kill you. But then he wanted to show up that he is invincible. So he kept on trying to pick fights and all the human beings who said, said, they said, we don't want to fight with you. Yes, you are strong, but oh, I want to show off I'm strong. Doesn't matter, you are strong, go home. And then he started to pick fights with the celestials and everybody said, no, 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 Vishnu is better than me. Vishnu is better than, Krishna is better than me. Everybody sent him to Lord Krishna. And then he wondered where Lord Krishna is. Lord Krishna was busy tackling another demon called Narakasura. The, the one that was killed, who, whose death is celebrated as 
Deepavali in, in, in India. So he was busy trying to uh, vanquish him. And then he said, oh, I should go protect him. And that way I will save him from Krishna. So he went and became Narakasura's bodyguard. And then what? He was, uh, Krishna made, you know, sent the Sudarshana Chakra. See, it's neither God nor human being. It's a chakra. It just went and uh, all his five heads were gone. Five heads means confused, egotistical, no priorities, all over the place, that's what it is. So, Mura, Murasya Arihi. Ari means enemy. The one who is the enemy of Mura is Krishna. Sakrita Pichet, Murari Samarcha, Yena. So, by, by whom the uh, Lord Krishna has been worshipped at least once, Priyate Yamenana Charcha. There is no reason to argue with Lord Yama, please come back later, I still have to live my life. In other words, Yama will not touch. What happened? Yeah, it, it, it's, I also thought about it. I also thought about it. I don't think it is uh, anything in particular. The only thing I can think of is Mura had a little to do with Lord Yama. That's the only thing because Yama is also mentioned. But then this Murari will come even later on also. It's a favorite name for Krishna, the vanquisher of ego. The little tip he had with Yama was he wanted to fight Yama and Yama said, no way, I don't want to fight with you. That's all he said. And so here, the one who is uh, who, who is the, but Krishna has a long list of demons he killed. In fact, you can Google it. Google it and say, uh, demons that Krishna killed. So many people, Asuras will come. That, that was his job. Every day he was offering somebody or the other. And so, so, Sakrita Piche, Murari Samarcha, then what happens? Uh, yamena, uh, Yamena na charcha, Tasya Kriyate, meaning Yama will respect him. <laughs> Yama or her, the one who is like this, Yama will not come near, meaning untimely death will not occur, terrible death will not occur, there is a protection from Bhagavan. There is a kind of a protection from Bhagavan and then because one is being readied for Vedanta through all these sadhanas, these are all becoming sadhanas, indirect sadhana to prepare for the study of Vedanta, worship of Bhagavan and sadhana like Ganga water, all these things. Um, so it is all preparation for full time study. So therefore one will be one's pursuit will be protected. That is the idea. More we'll see tomorrow. Om Purnamada 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 Chate Purnasya Purnamada Purnamiva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Yodonamaha Hari Om